Now, in addition to my duties as hosting, I am also uh, have the privilege of being the next speaker at the conference. So join me now as I reveal the not so secret employee experience notebook. As I said, I'm Simpson, Greg Simpson, agent in engagement. My mission is to help companies and their employees succeed by creating more meaningful, productive, and engaging workplace experiences. And how do I do that? Well, I infiltrate companies, I uncover threats to the employee experience, and I neutralize them before it's too late. Now, you'd be asking what kind of threats um, might there be uh, when it comes to employee experience. And what you see on the screen are just a few sample threats, um, one for each stage of the employee experience process. But what we're gonna do today is something a little bit different. I'm actually gonna take you on a mission with me. I'm gonna give you an assignment. And that assignment is gonna focus on one of those threats. And that threat is, how do we improve performance feedback? So before we get started, I think we need to do a little intelligence gathering to make sure we're all on the same page so that we can make the best decision when it comes to our client, which we'll meet in just a second. So first, let's start with the state and employee engagement. 23% of employees are engaged worldwide. That's costing companies billions of dollars and basically making people just wanna leave, just walk out and quit. Very sad. But engagement is just a point in time. What drives the employee engagement is really the employee experience. So let's look at the state of the employee experience. Hopefully I'm preaching to the choir here and people know that companies that focus on the employee experience are more profitable and their people are more engaged, which is very important. So since we are gonna be talking about performance reviews today, let's look at the state of performance reviews as well. Basically, nobody likes their performance review Nobody thinks it's very useful, and very few people get inspired after the performance review is over. So it's a pretty dismal state. When we did some research, we found out that managers account for 70% of engagement, uh, variance in engagement. And what people are looking for, employees are looking for, are consistent connect, communication and really looking for someone that's going to help them build on their strengths to get them to the next level. So let's, let's meet our client. His name is Mark. Mark is the director of product management for a local tech company. He has seven direct reports. Um, to give you some background, Mark reached out to me at the end of last quarter. He had just gone through another performance review process. It did not go well, which we'll learn about in a second. Um, and he realized that uh, he needed to do something different and uh, knew that it was a threat to the employee experience of his company and his, his team. Um, and that's why he reached out to me. So the reason he reached out to me was because of the person we're calling our target today, and that's Sarah. Sarah's one of his senior product managers. And what happened was, while Sarah's a dedicated employee, he gave her a less than stellar performance review last quarter. Now, it's not like he didn't have a lot of information. He had plenty of information, documents, reports, performance reviews from previous um, quarters, times that she'd been recognized, things like that. But if he's like most people, and this is what happened to Mark, was he had all this information, but he didn't really know where to find the insights that he needed to, to perform a, a good performance review with, with Sarah. So he ended up really not acting on any of them. And that's what led to this poor, poor rating that he gave. In fact, the biggest bias that he brought into the process was his idiosyncratic bias, which basically means that we favor people that are like us and we tend to be unfavorable to people that are different from us. And in this case, Mark and Sarah are very different. They, they really respect each other, but they have vastly different ways about going about things. And that led into some of what was uh, what's happening with this performance review. Now, what's interesting is that Sarah called him out because she had a whole different view of whatever performance. And she brought some uh, evidence to prove that specifically the high praise that she got from her colleagues and her customers. And so that's when Mark, they sat back down, they worked through the process and they realized that they needed to come to a better, better process of, of how performance reviews were given. So again, Mark brought me in at that point and uh, we looked at some of the things again, again, the same 
information we saw before. And basically, Mark knew that he was the person that had to make the change because he was responsible for most of the employee engagement. And that it really needed to focus on consistent communication and helping Sarah develop her strengths. So the first thing that we did was implement a new process for Mark and Sarah and actually all of Mark's team. Um, this process started in August and ran through, is still running through October. And that was a manager employee weekly check-in discussion. Sarah and Mark come together and they discuss four questions. Uh, they do this weekly and they document all of the discussions that they have. Now, sometimes they have this over email, sometimes they do it over Slack, sometimes they do it in person, sometimes it's via Zoom or Teams. Um, it really doesn't matter how the process, what the process is of getting it done, it just matters that you do the process. You have to meet for 10 to 15 minutes each week, discuss these uh, and document them so that you can see and track progress. And again, this goes back to those two things that we talked about, communication. So this definitely helps improve Mark and Sarah's communication. And it also lets Sarah know that Mark as a manager is really looking out and trying to help her develop um, and improve on her strengths. But this alone is not enough to do a performance review. Oh, sorry. So I think what's really interesting too is the people that do this process, when companies or teams adopt this process, they see a significant increase in not only engagement, but a significant decrease in turnover. And again, just for doing the process, and it doesn't really matter how it's implemented, just stick to it. So again, back to the performance review, Mark has a lot of information that we've talked about before. Again, he didn't really know how to pull all that together. Now he's got this new process where he's got this you know, weekly documentation from his meetings with him and Sarah. So what does he do? Well, that's where the not so secret employee experience notebook comes into play. And I'm not sure if you've heard of it yet, but that secret experience, that not so secret employee experience notebook is actually Notebook LM, which allows us to gather intel, connect dots, and find secrets, find insights hiding in plain sight before they do any damage. So let me briefly give you an overview of what Notebook LM is and what it does. It is a free AI powered tool that's available across many countries and in many languages. It's free, but you do have to have a Google account or a Gmail account in order to access it. Notebook LM uses Google's Gemini 1.5 model in its, in its uh, process. It does not train your data um, on any of, the, of, of, the, of any of its models. And the really interesting part was, while you can create up to 100 notebooks per account, each notebook allows you to upload 50 sources. And each of those sources can be up to 500,000 words. So that gives you 20, or basically 20, sorry, 25 million words in each notebook that you can have. And those can take different formats. They can be PDFs. You can pull in Google Docs and slides. Worst case scenario, you copy paste. And you can even pull in YouTube videos or specific URLs, websites that you need. So what I'm going to do is actually walk you through a live demonstration of how we're working with Mark to bring this into reality and how it's going to help him have a better performance review with Sarah. So I'm going to stop sharing for just a second. Actually, I don't need to stop sharing. a second here, folks. So this is Notebook LM. And for some of you, you may say, this looks a little bit different if you've ever been into it before. And I'll tell you that as of 10 o'clock last night, it is different. Prior to that, it had a very different, uh, different look. Um, basically the same information, but it had a few sample notebooks that people could use to figure out you know, how, how, how they might be able to use it better. But basically we've logged in when you log in, it's going to ask you to log in with your Google information. We created new and we brought in Sarah's information. So we're going to play with some of that in just a second as well. So with Sarah, I have all of these sources over here. I've done a few things before here, uh, but I'm going to pull up this main part. This is the main part of, of Notebook LM, the guide. When I pulled in all of the sources, it automatically summarized all those sources for me. So this is an overview of everything that I've included in this folder, of this notebook specifically. I can chat based on that. If I want, if I have a question or whatever, I can chat. 
um, the really interesting thing about Notebook LM is that you get to choose what sources get pulled in. So I have, um, as you can see here, 14 sources. You see at the very bottom out of 50. If I decide I want to ask questions about just the performance review or the uh, performance feedback that she's gotten from clients, I can go in and leave those checked and then uncheck all the rest. And when I do the chat, when I say, can you please summarize the client feedback, it'll pull just the, from that information just from those sources that I've got selected. Okay, so it's very interesting. So in fact, we're actually gonna do this. Um, what, we, what I realized was that Sarah received a new piece, I, I got a new piece of uh, information from Mark. So we're gonna go, let me go back here quickly. So we're gonna go to the top of the sources. We're just gonna click the plus, which is add source. And it's gonna give us all the options that we have. So I told you before, when we upload files, we can use PDFs, text, audio, you can even import MP3s. If you have Google Docs, you can put, pull in your Google Docs or Google Slides. If you have a website, perhaps you want to pull in your company website because it has your values and your vision and your uh, other information that may be interesting to the job, maybe like the, the role description, things like that. Um, YouTube videos, um, not so much relevant in this case, but um, in other cases it might be, and we'll talk about some of those at the end. Or worst case, you find something that you want, it doesn't upload, you can't get it uploaded, you can copy paste that text and paste it into Notebook LM. So in our case, we've got a PDF. I'm gonna pull in Tom's thing here, open. And you're gonna see it pulls it right in. It's right here, right here at Tom. So we're gonna leave that checked. And we're gonna go down and ask a question. Um, can you please Summarize, I have a screen hiding me here, just a second. It's the client feedback for Sarah. If I can spell it would help. And that's gonna be a, just a very simple one. Now you can see they've got some predetermined um, options here that you can ask um, if you want to do those as well. But we're gonna ask this question and see what happens. So again, it's using the Gemini 1.5 model to pull together, but the information it's pulling is only from what we have here. It doesn't pull in any, side, any outside information. And if you ask a question that's not included in your sources, it will tell you that it doesn't have that information to be able to pull. So this did exactly what I wanted it to do. So the refresh last night caused some problems. So this is the summary client feedback for Sarah. And you can see here's the positive feedback, here's the areas for improvement. What I wanted you to notice was that it pulls in the actual data that it gets this information from. So in this case, it used uh, citation one, two, three, four. So if I hover over it, it actually shows me where it pulled the information from. This, per, this one came from David Park. So down here, aligned with stakeholders, that came from Tom. Um, so very interesting. So you can always know back, go back to where you are. If you click on it, it pulls it up to the side and shows you where in the, the note that it got that information from, okay? Very interesting. So another option, another thing to let you know as well is that after you import all of your sources, I showed you that it, it created the, uh, the summary for all the sources as well. But suppose you just wanted a summary of that one source. So we've got some, I'm just gonna go back and click these again, click everything back on. So we'll have everything being used say this one so this is a uh, an article from hbr about um reinventing performance management it actually gives you a summary as well of each individual source that you put in there and gives you access to the full source as well and should that come up in one of your citations it would show you where within this magazine article hbr article that it pulled that information from so very helpful now, one thing I want to show you is, I'm going to pull this back here, is, actually, hold on a second. So this actually is, is a, good, a, good, a good thing to show you, because I was going to do that anyway. So you notice that prior to coming on, I actually did a citation. We had eight citations at that point. We have nine now. And I saved the response from ChatGPT, or from, 
from Notebook LM. But if you notice, I can't highlight the the, notate, the citations anymore. Um, that's basically due to the upgrade that happened last night. Um, so that's why I wanted to run it again to see if, if that was the case. So any previous notebooks I have are not going to give me that information. I'll probably need to run them again. Uh, or notes that I had, we'll probably have to run them again. You'll also notice that you don't see Sarah, you don't see that that information anymore on the feedback that we just ran, right? It just goes back to our thing. We don't have any of the citations. But what happens is because I clicked off and went into the sources, it removes all that information. It's not like ChatGPT or Claude. It doesn't save your chats. If you want to save your chats, you actually have to go to the bottom and tell it to save. So let's do the same thing all over again. Please summarize the feedback from Sarah's clients. Before I do that, I need to go back over here. I just want to pull the information from Sarah's client, clients themselves, not the other extraneous information. We could probably those checked, but I just want to make sure that there's any kind of other kind of recommendation or something like that that we might, might have issues with. So there we go. So it actually pulled it back up again once you did a new, a new thing. So once you exit out of this notebook, that's when everything will disappear. Like I said, if you want to keep it, then you have to click this save to note at the bottom. Okay. And that will pin the note just like the other ones I've got on the, uh, on the screen here. So I'm going to save to note. It's going to put it right back on here as well. Okay. And they put them in order. So this will be the last one. The first one I did was here. The next one is uh, the last one I did was up here. And again, you click on it again, and you can read everything. You can't export this at this point. You just, if you need it somewhere else, you have to just copy paste. Um, but again, last week, a week ago, they announced, announced that uh, this whole process is going to be set up for businesses uh, rather than just from the personal standpoint like it is now. Um, so that'll give enterprise organizations and other large and medium small companies um, some options there as well. Um, and then last night, like I said, completely re redid the uh, the interface that they have here too. So, so always changing. So always have to go in and, and, and play and see what's going on. But what we can use this for next is I'm going to check all the sources. It's basically say, and you can see we have 15 sources here. That's what we're that's what we're doing this chat based off of. And I'm going to say um, suggest a performance review template based on the this information. And let's see what happens. Again, this is live. So it's going through all of the information that we have to pull together this review template. And there we go. I'm going to scroll back up to the top. Opening, you know, acknowledge the role, exceeding expectations, but she sees those, but key strengths that she has, areas for development. So this gives you, I would not use this as your actual template, I would actually use that as the basis to develop your template or your approach to how you're going to handle the performance review with Sarah. But as you can see, it gives you in a short amount of time by just uploading all the sources that you need, it gives you a good starting point um, and the information that you might want it to, uh, to be able to pull together to, uh, to support um, the, uh, the rating and things like that that, you are, that you're talking with her about. So again, if you want to save this note, you have to click save. Otherwise, when you exit out of this, if you create, you went to somebody else's notebook and came back in, the chat would be gone. You'd have to run it all over again. Okay. So that's just a few a few things there. Um, one thing I will say is that if this is something that you want to share with Sarah, if this is you know a, a board that you want to go back and forth on, so she could actually add in her client feedback, there is in the top right uh, a share button. You could actually add share, add her to that, um, or just copy the link and give that to her in an email, and then she would have access to um, to this. And it depends on whether you give her ownership access or whether she just has uh, view only access at the same time. But that's Notebook LM.
uh, for us a, a very uh, quick tutorial on how to use it from a performance review standpoint. I'm going to go back into the presentation now and talk about a few more things. I, I will scroll through some of the things. I told you that the homepage changed for Nobuckle Lamb. This is what it looked like before 10 o'clock last night. Um, so they just taken away the, um, the uh, things at the bottom, the tutorial type things. Um, actually, one thing I didn't mention, and it's not really relevant to from a performance review standpoint, but it is for uh, some other op potential opportunities. Um, it actually presets some things here that you can do. If you click on FAQ, it'll take all the information and put it in the form of FAQ. Um, builds timelines, the briefing doc. So that's kind of a briefing doc is a good uh, overview of all the documents you have in here um, and what they what they cover, similar to the summary, but in more detail. New table of contents. And for people that are in class or wanting to learn new things, you can actually create study guides based on the information that you pull in from the sources. The thing that Notebook LM has probably gotten the most um, recognition for is the podcast that it can create. You can actually cu customize that now. That happened uh, last week as well. So if you wanted to focus on a specific uh, topic or something like that, based on that, it pulls in from all of your, your sources. Um, you can kind of guide that podcast a little bit more. But I'm going to run it through here. I'm going to come back to it after it generates. And I'm going to just give you an idea of what that actually sounds like. OK? So again, these are just some um, interim slides that I put in from Notebook LM for those people that uh, that come in after the fact um, that aren't here live. Um, there are some opportunities if you want to to use various prompts to get more information. And these are just four separate prompts that, uh, that we created to uh, get you thinking and to help prompt Notebook LM to give you the information that you need to have a, a, a good performance review. But now we get back to, we've had the, you know, have the performance review. That's a one-on-one -on -one individual uh, process between Mark and Sarah. But how do we roll that up within the organization? Um, basically, most companies have a very outdated process. Their performance reviews are very time consuming. They cost millions of dollars. Um, and they don't really achieve what they want, uh, what you want, because it's you're just not getting the same feedback, similar to what happened the first time with, with Mark when he tried to give feedback to Sarah. Um, and then also people start pitting themselves against each other. Um, it becomes a not, you know, it just becomes a, a real mess. So what we did was we suggested that Mark's company look at using Deloitte's four question performance review. And then this is a way to kind of neutralize the the idiosyncratic bias that uh, a lot of managers pull into the performance reviews um, and really get a better overall view of, of the person that you're evaluating uh, from a company standpoint. So these four questions are, are pretty simple. It's given what I know of this person's performance, and if it were my money, I would award this person the highest pop possible compensation and bonus. Given what I know of this person's performance, I would always want him or her on my team. This person is at risk for low performance, and this person is ready for promotion. These are either yes, no questions or on a scale of one to five. And given that information, the company can then compile those to figure out where their company is a whole at a whole um, going forward. Of course, those at risk for low performance, that gives us an opportunity to, to try to come in and, and uh, save that person from uh, from being let go or uh, impact, you know, having low performance uh, continuing on. So what does that do for us? So by, by instituting the, the Deloitte four question system, it really simplifies things. Our process uh, gives the employee real time feedback and it's all about having forward looking conversations. So we've aligned the manager with the employee. We've hopefully increased engagement and motivation because we're communicating with our people. We know what's going on. We're actively involved in trying to help them build on their strengths. Uh, again, we, those are all developed through those performance insights we gained through Notebook LM. It reduces bias, which is huge. And really, the whole point of the thing is to simplify the process. We want to focus on our people, not our process. And that's what this, this new performance management system uh, will, allow, will allow us to do. Now, I mentioned before, there are a few other options that you can, can use Notebook LM for. I think there's a lot of them. I think every threat that I mentioned earlier has an option that uh, would be uh, interesting to pursue within Notebook LM. 
There are companies now that are using Notebook LM specifically for onboarding. They're taking all of their onboarding materials, their employee handbook, all of that, uploading it into, into Notebook LM in a notebook, and then sharing that notebook with everybody in, the, uh, in that particular class or, or anybody that's, that's going through the onboarding process. So they have instant access in a very you know, chatbot-like way to, to get the information that they need. Um, this, I think, is especially helpful for small and medium-sized companies that don't have the resources to have those, you know, chatbots embedded into their, into their websites and things like that. But again, you can use it to track onboarding progress, summarize feedback from new hires. There's lots of things from an onboarding standpoint um, that would be useful. You can also look at just employee engagement in general, you know, from pulse surveys, one-on-one -on -one meetings, team discussions, pulling those into a notebook um, and seeing what insights come out of those, um, which might help you know, potentially avoid a mistake that would impact engagement or the employee experience and allow you to have more meaningful conversations and connections with your teams. And then the final one I'll mention is just career development. And this can be done from an individual or uh, an employee standpoint. Um, I would suggest if you use Notebook LM that like we have the notebook for Sarah, I would have a notebook for each of my other employees. I would have a notebook for myself one especially around devoted around career development for myself. I would probably have notebooks on each project that I'm working on. I'd have a notebook for my company. So anytime they release uh, press releases or annual reports or things like that, I could pull that in and really get a feel and be able to ask and learn easier what's going on from my company standpoint. And that's especially helpful if, if your upper management is not communicating um, as, as much or as effectively as you would like. So again, just a few, a few options there. Um, just to summarize, um, this was an assignment that we worked with Mark on trying to improve performance reviews. Um, we looked at the traditional way that it had been done in the past, how Notebook LM can help bring together those insights and make it easier and, and more effective uh, for managers to have those conversations. Then we moved on to Deloitte's four question model of how companies can use the information to roll up uh, their performance and their performance management process. And then we looked at some ways that even beyond performance reviews, how Notebook LM can really neg negate the threats um, that uh, may be impacting your employee experience. So I'd invite you to engage. Again, I'm Simpson, Greg Simpson. Um, reach out to me on LinkedIn if you have any questions. I'd be happy to, uh, to do that. I'd love to hear your uses of Notebook LM uh, going forward. And that's the end of this transmission. So for right now, we have just a few minutes, probably about a minute before we get to our next speaker. We have a, a very good case study coming up. So I will turn it back over to the, to the team and then we'll be back with you in just a few minutes.